What is going on YouTube? Wow, long time no see, but here we are. So about a month ago, SV Boney sent me this telescope. This is the SV Boney SV550. This is a triplet APO refractor, and I am here to review it and give you guys my thoughts and experiences while I've had this scope for about a month. And let me tell you, this thing is absolutely amazing, and I can't wait for you guys to hopefully have one of these in the near future. I'm gonna go over all the specs of this telescope, all the upgrades, because I've had the previous model, which I still use, that's my main scope before I have to sadly send this one back. But, and I'm going to show you my experience of photographing the Andromeda Galaxy with this telescope, with my standard camera, and all my regular normal things that I normally put on here to get all the guiding and everything around. SG Boney did not pay me to promote this telescope or pay me to make this video. This is all on my own doing, so therefore, there is no other outside influence on what I say. This is all my thoughts and experiences, nobody else's. So join me today as we photograph the Andromeda Galaxy, and we also take a look at this incredible telescope. Let's get into it. Boy, can you believe that this is finally in 4K? Whoa! Here we are, and it's time to finally look at this telescope that SV Boney sent me. When they notified me that I was being sent a telescope, I was super excited because this is a really crazy opportunity for me. And if you guys want to purchase anything SV Boney related, just follow my links in my description. And if you want to buy anything else astrophotography related, make sure you use my High Point Scientific Affiliate links below. It will help me tremendously to make content for you guys at no extra cost to you guys. So if you guys order anything or make a small purchase, it means the world to me or just clicking those links. Thank you guys so much. You guys remember this one, right? Well, this is my main telescope. This is kind of the previous lower version model of the telescope that I was just sent by SV Boney. This is the SV503 and this is a doublet achromatic refractor telescope. So it is still an astrophotography telescope, but it's not really at that full potential of being a astrograph telescope that like a lot of professionals would use. So this is kind of more of like a amateur kind of beginner astrophotographer telescope, but it can definitely get you really far into the hobby, just like it did for me. Now, of course, I want to upgrade to a triplet APO refractor telescope. I'm sure everybody does. You want to get those really professional looking pictures. And if you're really concerned about that, then make sure you get one of those telescopes, which is the one that they sent me. But if you're just starting out in astral photography, I'm telling you, this is probably one of the best telescopes that you guys could get for the price. But if you've been doing astral photography for a long time, you might want to make the jump to a more expensive telescope that might give you some more leeway to do some more crazy things. For instance, a triplet refractor design has a added benefit, a lot more added benefits to a doublet design. For one, the triplet design allows for three glass elements, which allow you to have more sharper stars. And I definitely noticed that when I took my first images of the Andromeda galaxy. All around, just everything was a lot sharper when I was using this telescope. And there's a lot of crazy new things that they added into this telescope that I wouldn't say blows this telescope out of the park, but it definitely does give you a noticeable advantage in difference. So let's hop into the specs of this new telescope and why it's a little bit better than a doublet design. So as you guys can hopefully see, this telescope kind of looks exactly the same as my other one, but there's a couple things that you might notice. For one thing, you have these new adjustment knobs here to slide up and down the telescope according to balance. These are slightly different and I would say that they're a little bit easier to use. And you also have this little red ring here, which is pretty cool. These are just visual differences. And you also have a red focuser, and this is a dual speed rack and pinion focuser. And this thing has been absolutely amazing when I have focused this telescope. You might also notice that there is a longer dovetail, and this is actually what most normal telescopes have. My actual telescope that I use for astrophotography kind of has a little dinky dovetail, which I wasn't really satisfied about because it's kind of hard when you're trying to balance on different setups. But this one has a lot of leeway to really make sure that you want to balance your telescope right. You could really slide it down, you could slide it up, you could slide it however much you want. And it's really easy to bring this thing off and on at the same time. So once you have this in here, everything just tightens up thanks to my mount. And you also have a little slider here to put a guide scope on. And in this case, you could take this thing off and you could slide a guide scope on here. And this is exactly what I did with my original guide scope setup. So I just put this thing on here. You just slide this thing right in here. And then you have a guide scope set up for 
taking guided exposures and making sure you get those nice tack sharp stars. Coming onto the front of the telescope, you can also see that this thing slides down and it slides up to allow you to get more dew prevention to make sure that your glass stays nice and clean overnight when that dew point drops down. Now I'm gonna bring this telescope back inside so you guys can see a little bit more in depth on what the biggest difference of this telescope is. It's a good thing and it's also kind of a bad thing because it also allows you to spend more money on this. You probably wish you would get everything that you need right out of the box, but there is some things. And one crucial thing that you will have to purchase, unfortunately, with this telescope, probably two things actually, but it is just the luck of the game. So let's go bring this telescope inside. Let's do a couple comparisons side by side, and then let's get ready to take a picture of the Andromeda galaxy with this telescope because, oh boy, I haven't finished this project yet, but I'm telling you with full confidence, it's going to be incredible. All right, so we finally have this telescope back inside and I think I have a couple things to show you guys. Now, I was saying that there's a lot of those visual differences, but I think one of the weirdest things about this telescope, despite everything that makes it so great, is actually this part here. So I'm gonna take this part apart. Okay, now you could see that once I took that apart, I have this weird thing. Now this is a field flattener, which this telescope, as far as I'm concerned, does not come with. So this is something that you're going to want to pay for. This is a field flattener to make sure that you have a flat field in all of your corners. And even though this is an expensive telescope, you will in fact need this if you want to get those sharp stars in all corners of the image. It's just something with refractors that you know, is kind of bogus, but whatever. One thing I thought that was really weird about this telescope is that this thing is like really big and you can take this thing apart in like all places, which I find is really strange. I mean, it does have something nice here. This is like a little filter holder, in which here I have my Optolong L Ultimate, which I recently used in here. And then you have the actual field flattener itself, which works tremendously well, so no no complaints there at all. But then, this is a huge contrast to my telescope, you just have this open area right here, just completely open where you screw the back of this thing onto here and it just works. It's a lot different than my other telescope, I'll tell you that. Now you can see how smooth this Folkser is, it's very, very smooth. As you can see, when I'm using this fine tuner for this Folkser, it goes really smooth and that's something that I really do appreciate. It also has a faster mode where this thing goes super smooth as well, so this thing does a great job of focusing. A cool added benefit to this telescope is that on the inside of this thing, it has these little ridges which kind of make sure that your stars and your image is a little bit sharper than your other telescopes that might not have this. Now these little ridges on the inside are actually in a lot of Newtonian designs as well, and it helps a lot when you're getting a lot of sharp stars. So these ridges in here, I think is something that is extremely important when deciding on a telescope, especially a telescope like this one, that is really top-notch. I mean, this thing does not mess around at all. This is a huge upgrade compared to my other telescope. And obviously, these little knobs you can take apart and bring the telescope out of here. No big deal. They come off separately like this. And there you go. You have your telescope right here. It's pretty small compared to that when it's completely folded down like that and then you can just put it back on whenever you so choose. Now my older guy is still great. I still absolutely love this telescope. To the end of the world, it's always gonna be amazing, but the focuser, I really don't think it's that smooth compared to the other one. It's still really smooth, but I think the red one is just a lot better. But I think the triplet APO one is just way better. Now I did forget to mention one thing, and this is actually a huge problem, but not really a huge problem if you have the money for it. But it is kind of a concern if you're just getting this telescope and you're a little bit confused of this. So when I first got this telescope, I thought that I was gonna be able to rotate my image however I wanted because that's how my old one was able to do that. It had a knob that allowed you to rotate your camera sensor without it messing up the focus and everything. And apparently this telescope, well, it doesn't have one anywhere. So because that it doesn't have one literally anywhere, you have to buy one, and I had no idea you had to buy one. You have to buy a rotator for this triplet telescope along with a field flattener. It's a, it's kind of just a lot to add to a telescope, don't you think? Yes, it would be awesome if everything came together all bundled up. That's what a lot of telescopes do. But with this one, you do have to buy 
a lot of outside things to get the full potential of this telescope. Now don't get me wrong, this telescope is still going to be incredible just by itself without getting that rotator or getting that field flattener, but just know that you can take this thing really to the extreme if you get those things and trust me it saves you a lot of hassle in the end of it. I had to buy a field flattener, it was a pretty big, it was a pretty big expense on my end, but I've been using it forever and ever and I cannot be more happy that I have sharp stars at all the corners. But yeah, that's just a little something that I was disappointed with, how they don't have their own rotator in here because otherwise you're only restricted to shooting at a certain field of view without it, any camera tilt or anything. So make sure that if you guys want to tilt your images to how you want when you're taking pictures, make sure you get one of those rotators. But anyway, I think we're ready to go take some pictures of the Andromeda Galaxy. So let's get it. Okay, we have a beautiful clear night here and we are finally testing this telescope out on the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, I wouldn't say this is the first time I'm testing this out, but I do have a couple thoughts to share with you guys. As you guys can see on my screen, we are doing some narrowband action on the Andromeda Galaxy tonight and the first sub looks absolutely amazing as far as I'm concerned. You can really tell that through a triplet APO refractor telescope that everything is really a lot sharper. I mean, I'm seeing here things that I have never really seen in such detail before, especially with my old telescope telescope and wow is this thing really blowing my mind this is what these professional grade telescopes are designed for and what they do it really does make a huge difference when you have it out here on the field I do have one minor complaint about this telescope but this is also kind of what you pay for as well but it's really not really an inconvenience at all I've noticed that I've had a lot of focusing issues night after night like my old telescope used to be able to keep focus pretty well at least kind of in the reasonable ballpark this one really tends to change and I know exactly why this is happening because telescopes such as this one have three glass elements in here, they have something called pinched optics, which means that the three glass elements kind of change their size when the temperature either rises or drops. And as the temperature gets colder when the sun goes down, this kind of tends to push the telescope really, really in small areas to where you kind of lose your focus. But that's completely okay as long as you remember to keep your telescope out 45 minutes after the sun goes down just to make sure that it kind of gets in that reasonable temperature outside to make sure your optics are already pinched and they don't do anything crazy. Now another thing I'm going to mention is how we have a flat field and I'm going to show you guys this right now. You guys can see that in the corners of my image I have a completely flat field which means that there's no star distortions on the corners of the image and this is due to that field flattener that I have. Now I also want to mention that I don't have the rotator for this telescope so luckily the way that I had this all framed up with my camera is the Andromeda Galaxy fits right in the view perfectly so it's kind of like a perfect horizontal frame but obviously if you want to change that you're going to have to get that rotator. I'm going to reveal my image at the end of this video of the Andromeda Galaxy that I collected over a very long time. This is probably going to be my longest integrated project yet and I can't wait to show you guys the image that I got using this telescope for hands-on experience. So who would I recommend this telescope for? If you want a telescope that's going to deliver something really good, I think the SV503 is what you should go for if you're just starting off in astrophotography. If you want to really chase after your dreams in astrophotography, go for something a little bit more professional quality, get more of those sharper images, and take advantage of all the things that this telescope has in here, like the triplet APO design, the ridges inside the telescope that help with sharpness and clarity, and just the overall just nice quality durable experience of a high quality class telescope, I think this is what's going to really seal the deal for you. This telescope, I don't think will ever let you down in terms of its image quality. This thing has a flat field of view. You can add or get rid of things to this telescope. You can mix and match. You can really do whatever you want with this telescope and it is completely amazing. I definitely recommend it and I really wish that I had this thing with me for a long time. Once again, if you guys want to check out this telescope or any other products, make sure you use my affiliate links below and it helps me out tremendously to get more videos out for you guys to enjoy hopefully and I think it's time for me to reveal my image of the Andromeda Galaxy using this telescope. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of this telescope and clear skies guys.